All right, here's the second mini iceberg. Uh, I make these mini icebergs that, well, mini, like 20 minutes long, roughly. I make these in order to hold people over to the next big icebergs I do. But uh, it's about a franchise that I really enjoy that may or may not be mostly over, the MonsterVerse. So, without further ado, let's begin. In January of this year, an anime-style series titled Skull Island was announced to be in development. The show will be about a crew of shipwrecked characters trying to escape Skull Island. So literally every piece of media with Skull Island in it. Anyways, it will be canon to the MonsterVerse and be done by Powerhouse Animation Studio, the same studio behind Castlevania. There's been quite a few MonsterVerse comics, such as Godzilla's Awakening in 2014, Godzilla Aftershock in 2019, Godzilla Dominion in 2021, and Kingdom Kong, also in 2021. But there's also been a full-on miniseries that lasted five issues titled Skull Island Birth of Kong in 2017. These are all canon and feature a ton of original kaiju, like Mudo Prime, Kamazots, Spirit Tiger, the Death Jackal, Siren Jaw, and Timat, just to name a few. Though I guess I shouldn't say original because some of them do get name dropped very, very, very briefly in King of the Monsters. In April this year, Legendary Studios CEO Josh Grode commented on the future of the MonsterVerse, saying, We have a number of ideas for more movies. Right afterwards, Twitter was flooded with the hashtag, hashtag continue the MonsterVerse, which was even acknowledged by Legendary themselves. Anyway, shortly after this, The Hollywood Reporter stated that Legendary was, was taking steps to continue the series with a potential film being called Son of Kong. This would mark the first appearance of Kong's son in pretty much any media since, since the film Son of Kong in 1933. Behemoth is an original kaiju that appeared in King of the Monsters before making an appearance in Godzilla Dominion. His design is that of a sloth and bully mammoth combined, and is a protector kaiju, meaning that he doesn't want to wipe out humanity. Out of all the original kaiju in King of the Monsters, Behemoth has become the most well-known and most beloved. In fact, he even got a figure released of him, despite none of the other original kaiju in that film getting one. In King of the Monsters, when the underwater city is nuked, you can briefly see the skeleton of a kaiju that looks like Angiris. However, it is never confirmed to be Angiris, despite the skeleton being a clear reference to the character. Most likely because if they included him, they'd have to pay Toho for the rights to the character. So you might be wondering why I'm referring to the monsters as Kaiju, not Titans. Well, because, I mean, they are Kaiju. Let's be real. But legally, they're not allowed to be called Kaiju, because Legendary's other monster franchise, Pacific Rim, calls its monsters Kaiju. And Legendary has said they don't want general audiences to get confused. So they just referred to the ones in Monster vs. Titans. There weren't any. That's it. Godzilla 2014 was originally planned as just that. A single film that maybe, maybe would get a sequel if it was successful. However, after the success of the film, Legendary began work on the MonsterVerse immediately. It announced in July 2014 that they had acquired Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah for the sequel. Just like with all movies, there's bound to be scenes deleted from the final cuts. The MonsterVerse is no different. In Godzilla 2014, according to the art book, there was going to be a scene in which Godzilla attacks Alcatraz. A scene in which the Mudo's EMP would have disabled Godzilla's atomic breath for a bit was cut. A scene in which Ford Brody has a conversation with a Japanese immigration officer, played by Akira Takrata, who played the main character of the original Godzilla. Weirdly enough, this scene was filmed but never released. It's technically lost media. In Kong Skull Island, a scene in which Preston Packard celebrated with his men about to go home after the Vietnam War was cut. A scene in which James Conrad was being introduced to Packard was cut, and a scene in which Packard desperately tries to wake up a dead pilot was cut. It seems that they just cut most of the scenes where they tried to make Packard look like a decent person, instead of, you know, the dude who wants to, like, burn Kong alive. In King of the Monsters, there's a scene in which Madison practices boxing with one of the terrorists holding her hostage. That scene from the trailer where Madison starts crying when she hears so many people in distress was cut. A second after credit scene was cut from King of the Monsters, which would have featured twins discovering the Mothra egg. I highly doubt that these would be the fairies of the original series. Probably just a homage to them. And every single Titan that's name dropped in the film was meant to be shown, but was scrapped because of budget concerns. And finally, in Godzilla vs. Kong, originally Lance Reddick's character, Gillerman, would have had much more screen time as Monarch's new director. Nathan Lind and his crew discovering the remains of his brother's lost expedition to the Hollow Earth was also cut. Jessica Henwick was going to be in the film, but was cut out completely. The paintings in Kong's temple would have shown Mothra, Rodan, and Behemoth as participants in the ancient war between Godzilla and Kong's species. Ren Surizawa would have tried to use a hitman to murder Simmons and deliberately uploaded Ghidorah's consciousness into Mechagodzilla. And finally, Eileen Chen was going to actually be in Godzilla vs. Kong. 
In a toy leak back in 2020 that I'll go into more detail later, a toy was leaked called Mega Godzilla. They had Godzilla wearing red power armor. I, like many others, thought this was just one of those toy-only gimmicks you see with a ton of movie tie-in toys. But no, Mega Godzilla was at one point going to be in the movie, apparently, according to rumors. His scrapped appearance even led to the figure being cancelled as well, at least according to rumors. Now these rumors state that Mega Godzilla was originally going to meet the film simply as Godzilla be controlled by Apex, who were using the upgraded Orca from King of the Monsters to control him. While the scrapped plotline was confirmed to be scrapped, the whole Mega Godzilla aspect of it hasn't been confirmed. So, was Mega Godzilla going to be in the film? There's some people saying yes, some people saying no, but hey, all we know is he's not in it. Now, all the kaiju went through some radical redesign throughout production, with Godzilla going through a ton of designs during his production, which, if I have to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of most of these, especially this one. Like, what is this? Also, he's going to shoot lightning at some point, so that was something. As with Kong, he went through some too, but it's kind of hard to mess up a giant ape so there's not too many. Ghidorah went through some changes, with some of them being a little more brittle looking than the beefed up juggernaut that is in King of the Monsters. Rodan actually had feathers at one point, and it had a more condor look to him. As for the Mudos, well, they probably had the most radical changes done to them, period. I mean, they went from a salamander to this thing to Cloverfield 2. Then there's Mechagodzilla, who went from Godzilla Knight Armor to how he looks now. Mothra has more of a butterfly look than an actual moth look in a lot of concept arts. As for the Warbats, they originally didn't look like snakes. They looked kind of like a, almost like a pterodactyl thing with giant tails. And finally, both Behemoth and Methsala originally had different designs, with Behemoth just being a big mammoth, while Methsala being just a big rhino. So there's a fake MonsterVerse movie lineup image that used to circulate everywhere online back in the day. And it actually tricked a lot of people, but n this isn't real. This isn't legit. In January 2020, Toys for Godzilla vs. Kong were leaked online during the Hong Kong Expo and revealed King Kong's axe, Mega Godzilla's design, Mega Godzilla, and the Warbats, though at the time they went by a different name. For Godzilla King of the Monsters, Legionary began a viral marketing campaign website for Monarch called MonarchScientists.net. On this website, you view potential kaiju sightings and an interactive map and track Godzilla. The site and its Twitter account were up for a while before going dormant after the release of King of the Monsters. However, once Godzilla vs. Kong started marketing, the site came back warning the two titans would engage in a fight. Currently, it's still up, but for how much longer? Who's to say? We will return to the only guy with bigger feet than Shaquille O'Neal, Godzilla, slamming and jamming on Cartoon Network. Fiat 500L. It's a lot bigger than you think. He's a lean, mean, monster battling machine. Godzilla. In 2014, there was a Godzilla first-person shooter. Well, kinda. Godzilla Strike Zone was a tie-in mobile game in which you'd drop into San Francisco and rescue civilians, all while Godzilla and the Mudos just terrorize the city around you. You only fire a gun a couple times in the game to shoot generators to save civilians, but hey, that's still that counts as the first shooter, right? Anyways, now it's impossible to get, so it's kind of lost media, though I'm sure there's some sketchy-ass website you could technically download it from, and then, like, destroy your entire computer's hard drive system with viruses, but, you know, small price to pay in order to play a really mediocre mobile tie-in shooter game. Because both franchises are owned by Legendary, there's been talks of the MonsterVerse and Pacific Rim franchises crossing over. Despite that being impossible in universe, since, you know, there aren't any giant kaiju walls or giant Jaegers in the MonsterVerse. Only way that could work is if the Jaegers in Pacific Rim somehow traveled to the MonsterVerse through that portal at the end of Uprising, 
in an attempt to kill all kaiju throughout the multiverse. But then, while they're there, they discover that not all the kaiju are evil. Instead of, after battling Godzilla, they realize he's not too bad, and they team up with him to fight some other giant kaiju, like Destroyer or something. Legendary, hire me. I'll write the... I'll, I'll, I'll take creative credit. Anyways, technically a crossover has already kinda happened. In Pacific Rim Uprising, the skulls of Gigan, Batra, Baragon, and the Mudos have appeared on screen briefly. But this is just an odd can Easter egg. Rogue One, also directed by Gareth Edwards, features cameos by Godzilla and two of the Mutos, but we don't actually see them in the film. You see, all three monsters were originally drawn on a wall, kind of like how R2 and 3PO are in Raiders of the Lost Ark in the background. Only difference is, though, we see those two in the film, but we never actually saw any shots of the Rogue One cameos. We just know they were there. In fact, we don't even have behind-the-scenes images of them. Mothzilla is the official name for the romantic shipping between Godzilla and Mothra. I wouldn't have put this on the iceberg if it was just that. But the ship has actually been acknowledged by people who work on the Monsterverse, such as King of the Monsters director Michael Doherty retweeted some fan art of the ship. The 2015 version of Godzilla PS4 features a ton of monsters from the Godzilla franchise, including the Monsterverse versions of Godzilla, who appears as Hollywood Godzilla. He's unlocked by beating the campaign entirely as Godzilla, but could be unlocked instantly by pre-ordering the game in North America or Europe. In an attempt at promoting Godzilla vs. Kong, Legendary teamed up with PUBG Mobile. During a special event, you could see Godzilla, Kong, Mechgodzilla, and a Skullcrawler up close and personal. Godzilla was located in Angrel, Kong in Sanhok, Mechgodzilla in Livlek, and I don't know where the Skullcrawler was. You're just kind of chilling wherever. Also, a side note, you can probably tell I don't play PUBG. There was even a game mode where you could even battle Mechagodzilla and watch him take on the two Alpha Titans themselves. Though, you really do all the work. At the very end of Godzilla King of the Monsters, Mechagodzilla is foreshadowed by a small line in a newspaper stating that Monarch is building him on Star Island. Or at least some kind of mech monster, as it stated that Monarch is working on their own mechanized giant at Sky Island. Weirdly enough, though, that's never brought up again, and Mega Godzilla was not the result of Monarch, but instead Apex. It's unknown whether or not this was going to be the original version of Mega Godzilla, or just an Easter egg. But with some rumors that the original plotline for Godzilla vs. Kong was going to heavily include Skull Islands as a plot point, then who knows? This could have been a scrapped plot point. In the final scene of King of the Monsters, there's a unique Buto that bows before Godzilla unlike the two from the prior film, and was confirmed by the director of the film to be known as the Queen Mudo. She has a crown of swords made of her dorsal ridges, meant to represent her age, and her body is covered with scars from previous battles. Funny enough though, Queen Mudo isn't what people normally call her. Most people just refer to her as Barb. Yeah, it's just a nickname given to her by the film's crew. I don't know where it came from, Originally, the NA of King of the Monsters would have had plenty of recognizable kaiju from Godzilla's past showing up to battle before him. Constant art showed Gigan, Baragon, yeah! Yeah! Anguirus, Kamikarus, and Kumonga. Even Kong would actually cameo in it. However, besides Kong, Legendary didn't have the right to any of these characters, so they'd have to pay up a lot of money just to use these monsters for the brief scene at the end. So instead, they just decided to create new kaiju like Behemoth. Michael Doherty on Twitter stated that he believes that Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and Ghidorah are represented by different tarot cards. Godzilla being the Emperor, Mothra the High Priestess, Rodan the Fool, and Ghidorah the Devil. Ren Sarazawa is the secondary human antagonist in Godzilla vs. Kong. Or wait, no, is it Maya Simmons? Whatever, he's an antagonist in the film. And is the son of Ishiro Sarazawa from Godzilla 2014 in its sequel. But this fact is never acknowledged by the film at all. In fact, it's only mentioned in the film's novelization. Whether or not mentions to his relation to his Sarazawa were cut or never intended at all are unknown. Legendary's announcement of Rodan, King Ghidorah, and Mothra being in the Monsterverse in 2014 is actually lost. You see, they had an exclusive video at that year's Comic Con that teased all three kaiju over audio of JFK talking. People have described the events in great detail, but the actual video announcing the Titans has never been released to the masses. Just like with Barb, there's been other nicknames for certain kaiju in the Monsterverse. 
For example, there's Kevin, who's the leftmost head of Eudora, who's become pretty popular among fans for being less intelligent than the other three heads. This nickname was actually started by Michael Doherty himself. What seemed funnier is that Spiral Studios referred to the leftmost head as Kevin when announcing their MonsterVerse Ghidorah statue. Meanwhile, in Galaxy vs. Kong, Photodon, which I'll talk about in a bit, was nicknamed Doug by fans. It was even acknowledged by director Adam Wingard and Legendary themselves. Also, since Legendary is asking Adam Wingard if he wants to make another MonsterVerse film, and he said that if he makes another one, Doug will return, I guess that kind of confirms that we'll see Doug again at some point. A lot of people tend to forget that we actually know the name of another one of Godzilla's species in the MonsterVerse, Dagon. Dagon actually appears in Godzilla 2014 as the skeleton Monarch walks through in the film. Legendary would later give Dagon his own backstory in Godzilla Aftershock, in which he's killed by Muto Prime around 11th century BC. In the Godzilla vs. Kong novelization, it's implied that Godzilla almost single-handedly wiped out most of Kong's species, and forced the rest to retreat to Skull Island, where they'd eventually be hunted to near extinction by the skull crawlers. Imagine being an ancient human and just witnessing hundreds of giant gorillas just running in and getting their asses hit destroyed by a giant fire-breathing lizard. For a guy who spent so much time in the water, Godzilla sure is stinky smelling. Whoa, be glad Cartoon Network isn't in Smellorama. King Kong! On King Kong glasses. Get one free at Burger Chef when you buy a Big Chef or Super Chef large fries and a large serving of Coca-Cola. Or get one with purchase of a regular size Coke at a special price. King Kong glasses. Get all four for your kids. You want a straw? You get one you like at Burger Chef. Remember, Godzilla is a good guy. Don't be frightened by his monstrous appearance. He loves you. He told me so. Godzilla Smash 3 was a free-to-play puzzle game made by Pipeworks for iOS devices to tie in with the 2014 Godzilla film. The player had Godzilla attacking military targets and the two Mudos by doing puzzles. This game also is the only appearance of the Mudos in any video game. And finally, this game was actually taken off the App Store in 2017, which means you can't really play it anymore, which is pretty noteworthy. I mean, most tie-in movie games are taken off the App Store within a little over a year after the movie's release. So the fact that this lasted three years in the App Store is kind of remarkable. Since Mechagodzilla was spoiled, not just by toys, but also because they literally showed him in the trailer, the biggest surprise for a lot of people in Godzilla vs. Kong was the return of the Arachnoclaws and Photodon, two smaller kaiju that were originally created for and only originally seen in Peter Jackson's King Kong in 2005. So I previously discussed all those scrapped kaiju like Gigan and Baragon that were originally intended to be the final scene in King of the Monsters. However, I left out one because he deserves his own spot in this iceberg. Strangely enough, one of the monsters included in concept art was Gamera which is extremely strange because not only was Gamera not licensed out to Legendary, but he's not even owned by Toho. Truthfully, I think he was just added to concept art for fun. I doubt Legendary ever intended to try and negotiate with both Toho and Katakwa to acquire Gamera for just a brief cameo, one in which he bows before Godzilla. Like, though it has been stated that all the kaiju in the concept art were originally intended to be in the film and they wanted to put in the movie, like they weren't placeholder images, so who knows? To promote Godzilla of King of the Monsters in 2019, Roblox released Godzilla items that could be worn in-game by completing a challenge quiz. If you did it, at the time, you'd have access to the decapitated heads of Ghidorah and Rodan for all eternity. Congrats. In 2019, Michael Doherty could discuss creating a Ray Harryhausen-esque type prequel film set in prehistoric times. The film would be about how primitive humans survived against Titans, and would have Godzilla's first meeting with humanity in it. It'll probably never happen, but here's hoping. During the ED of Godzilla Singular Point, there's a montage of kaiju like Violante, King Caesar, and Kiru, just to name a few. One of them happens to be the Monsterverse version of Rodan, though this doesn't make Singular Point part of the Monsterverse, obviously. It's just an Easter egg. Most of the outposts in the Monsterverse that monitor the Titans are actually references to other kaiju films. For example, Time At was monitored at Outpost 53, which was named after the year the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms was released. King Ghidorah was monitored at Outpost 32, which was named after a similarly named Outpost, Outpost 31, in John Carpenter's The Thing. Rodan was monitored at Outpost 56, a reference to the year his debut film was released. 
Mothra was monitored at Outpost 61, which like Rodan is a reference to the year her debut film was released. Sila was monitored at Outpost 55, which is a reference to the 1955 kaiju film Tarantula. Kong was monitored at Outpost 33, which is a reference to his debut film in 1933. And finally, the monarch outpost that monitors Godzilla himself is Outpost 54, which, like Kong, Rodan, and Mothra, is a reference to when his debut film was released. In issue 18 of Godzilla Rulers of Earth in 2014, Ishra Serizawa and Vivian Graham from the MonsterVerse make very brief cameos. Before Legendary got the rights to Mothra, they actually reference her twice in Godzilla's 2014 as Easter eggs. The first one is at the beginning of the film, where at the elementary school you can see a chart of the life cycle of a moth, along with a bunch of paper moths. And later at Ford Brody's old house, you can see a cocoon with two labels attached to it that together read Ford's Mothra. Screen X is a type of movie theater that has footage surrounding the audience viewing the film. And because Godzilla King the Monsters was screened in some of these theaters, the footage that is displayed on the sides of the theater room are lost media, since you can't really port that footage to home releases. Now you might be like, oh, that's just footage of destroyed buildings or whatever. And, well, maybe it is, probably. I mean, it's actually record-breaking, though. The film includes 50 minutes of panoramic footage that's now lost. So that's 50 minutes of destroyed buildings we'll never see. Vishnu, aka a strange dead monster, was the original design for the Mudo. Its only appearance was in the 2012 San Diego Comic-Con teaser trailer for Godzilla and got its name from the teaser's narration saying, Vishnu takes on his multi-armed form, as the camera pans to the monster's corpse. Though in the Godzilla 2014 art book, it's just listed as a strange dead monster. Go check out Wikizilla's video on the subject. Actually, you know, go check out all of Wikizilla's videos in the MonsterVerse. They're, they're all great stuff. Great channel. The 2020 film Love of Monsters actually samples audio from the MonsterVerse. For a giant crab in the movie, they use the Mudo's roar. In a piece of King the Monsters concept art, you can actually see a kaiju that's literally just that one picture from 2006 of a blue whale skeleton that the internet turned into SCP-682. Could it be that SCP-682 was the direct inspiration for this image being used in the concept art? Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. How well known is the SCP Foundation? I think it's just a famous image that they decided to use, but who knows? Maybe SCP-682 is just stomping around the monsterverse somewhere. Attention all evil monsters watching Cartoon Network. Godzilla's coming for you during this break. Don't bother hiding, he knows where you are. Godzuki, where are you, fella? Cartoon Network's taking a break. We gotta find him. Search around your house. Maybe he's out back or something. Hello. My name is Frederick Osiris, and I'm a member of Monarch. I've been allowed to reveal some previously unknown events that have, been, have occurred in the past years the public has not been aware of. Roughly two years after Godzilla and Kong battled, some sort of strange meteorite crashed into the Amazon rainforest. Strangely enough, there was no explosion. Monarch scientists reported seeing a black glob exit the meteorite that generated heat compared with Godzilla's atomic breath. In the coming months, that blob would morph into a titan we referred to as Orga. The radiation around the Titan also caused the rainforest around him to mutate so much that not even Behemoth could stop it. This resulted in the rainforest coming to life as a giant Titan we refer to as Biolanthe. A smog like blob Titan called Hedora soon came to life after Biolanthe's creation. Godzilla was spotted making his way towards Brazil, assumingly going after the trio, but what happened next is even too classified for me. Only a year after Godzilla and Kong clashed, Mark discovered a separate tribe of Iwi who never left the Hollow Earth. These people worshipped Kong as the ruler of the Hollow Earth. Though shortly afterwards, Mark discovered a separate tribe known as the Miraribi, who worship a titan they refer to as King Caesar, a strange titan that only sleeps, knowing that his tribe will protect him and alert him if there is a challenger to his throne. Once they found out about Kong and the Hollow Earth, they woke up Caesar with some sort of chant, and the two kings battled over who would become the king of the Hollow Earth, while the two tribes engaged in war around them. What happened next is classified. Five years before Godzilla and the Mudos clashed in America, a small village in Siberia was reported to being attacked by a titan that we estimate was the size of Rodan. Monarch sent a team to investigate and cover up the situation in case it was a titan. And while there, they discovered a titan named Varen. What happened next is unknown, but we do know that only one person returned from the team sent to investigate Varen. The only thing she stated was that Varen's gone, and she refused to elaborate. She went missing shortly afterwards. Just one month ago, something remarkable has happened. 
Some titans, such as Rodan, Mothra, the Mudo Queen, and Varen, have been spotted living in relative harmony on an island previously known, unknown to us. We sent in a team to investigate the island we've now dubbed Monster Island, and discovered several more titans previously undiscovered, such as Baragon, Zilla, Angiris, and Ebera. However, while there, the team discovered Alan Jonah and his team of terrorists attempting to awaken a titan buried beneath the Monster Island, known as Bagon, and a swarm of smaller titans known as the Servums. It's classified as to what happened next, but we do know the team sent there did everything they could to stop them from awakening Bagon and the swarm, while also avoiding antagonizing the local titans who live there. One final note. While there, they discovered a strange pre-Cambrian-looking crustacean that retreated into the ocean after being discovered. They reported that it had traces of the oxygen destroyer emitting from its body. And that's a wrap. I just want to clarify that that final section was both a pitch idea for more Monsterverse films while also trying to like stay in universe. I really wanted to do something like, like a Monarch thing, like be like a Monarch employee and whatever. But I also kind of wanted to do like a Cowboy Bebop Iceberg thing where I was like, you know, here's some ideas, here's some like dumb things, whatever. Although I actually personally like, think these ideas are cool. I don't think they're dumb. I think these ideas are pretty solid. Th that's what I would do with the Monsterverse personally. I also wouldn't have Godzilla Monster Island. Like, he would appear at the very end, like, after everything's destroyed, and they're all like, oh my god, there he is. He's 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 here. Whatever. And there'll also be, like, a scene where Godzilla, like, walks into the island, looks over, and sees, like, Zilla, and just kind of just looks at him like, what? Hello? And, like, walks off. Zilla's like, oh, fuck, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to fuck. I'm not going to fuck with you. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I mean, I, I think Zilla's underrated. He's a cool guy, too. His movie may not be, like, very good, but his design's, like, outstanding. I love it. But, yeah, there's uh, not much else to say. Um, there's a very good chance. Actually, no, there's not a very good chance. There's a 100% chance that uh, I will make a Godzilla iceberg one day. I've decided that uh, I will do it. Just, uh, it will, you know, it will take time. So, yeah, uh, hashtag continue the MonsterVerse, and I'll see you guys at the next iceberg or next video that comes out, because the next video will not be an iceberg video. Will people watch that one? Probably not, because nobody watched the one before. I That was not an iceberg video, so. Oh, well. Fuck me, I guess. No more saying cuss words, guys! It's inappropriate and violent!